How are you feeling, mate? I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, been a busy week. Been away in London. Um, yeah, late nights, kind of early starts. Yeah. I'm sure you know the feeling, mate. Yeah, well, I've got kids, mate, so yeah, well, we yeah, know no, what it feels like, you yeah, know. Yeah, that's it. So, uh, so yeah, I think uh, the first episode we did, I had some serious bags going on. I don't know how I look today, but I'm definitely a bit unkempt. I haven't shaved yet because I've been too busy. But, but yeah, so I think that probably segues into today's topic, mate. I think we should talk about sleep, rest and recovery. I think it's... Um, it's a big topic. Um, it's really important in regard to sort of physical and mental well-being. And I think it's worth one worth covering. So yeah. So I think I don't know where we start with this. So it would be good, I think, to talk about maybe things like sleep hygiene and how you can kind of uh, encourage good sleep. Um, so we'll cover that. Um, maybe the benefits of good sleep, and also maybe sort of the difference between like rest and recovery mm-hmm. and the benefits that they give you yeah. as well. Yep. Cool. So you, you talk about sleep hygiene. So what exactly is sleep hygiene? Because I've never heard anyone fucking say sleep hygiene before. So fucking yeah. good. No. <laughs> okay. Obviously, you, uh, I, I never have trouble sleeping, so I could sleep fucking anywhere, anytime. Obviously, you've had a few more troubles with your sleep, so I imagine you've done a bit more research on actually trying to get to sleep. Yeah. So is that is that where that comes from comes from? Yeah, originally. So uh, definitely my own struggle with sleep, um, but also obviously doing the work that I do with um, with Nuffield. Mm-hmm is uh you know where we talk about obviously sort of especially around joint pain and, and chronic pain conditions and, and being able to manage and tolerate those sort of things sleep's a big factor there as well so it's something we cover in that topic or, or that program as well but yeah essentially it doesn't refer to having a wash before bed um, although a, a, a nice warm shower can actually help sleep and what it actually refers to is the environment in which you create to sleep okay and primarily that's going to be things like you know is your room cool because your your core yeah. temperature needs to drop a little bit for you to fall asleep is it dark so just obviously shutting out any artificial or natural light is it quiet um and that's primarily it so that's kind of like the the, the main key thing so yeah so if you struggle sleeping like sleeping with a tv on can be a big hindrance yeah so let's talk about the light factor so Obviously, as a species, we're not nocturnal. Mm -hmm. So before we were able to create artificial light, we would be awake when the sun came up and we'd be asleep when the sun went down. Makes perfect sense, yeah. Whereas these days, we can obviously mimic sunlight. And the issue that that has on the body is we've got a circadian rhythm, which is where your body will release certain hormones or secrete certain hormones. Melatonin is the key one. Yeah, I was about to say. Which is basically, it doesn't put you to sleep, but it keeps you to sleep. So it's like a sedative. Now, that's why also going out in the daytime and getting some fresh air is important because when, you're, when your eyes absorb natural light, it starts to regulate a sleep pattern. Right. And then when you're indoors and you're on your phone and you're getting sort of blue light, which basically mimics daylight from devices um, or lights in the house, your body can't tell if it's night or day. And therefore, you don't secrete that hormone that keeps you asleep. And sometimes what you'll find is people will fall asleep because they're exhausted from their day. But they actually then have disturbed sleep. Well, see, like I've I've never really heard of that. I've done a lot of like studies into, you know, the benefits of sleeping, but not actually how to get to sleep because I've never really had that issue. Um, So, yeah, it's really interesting. So, yeah, so that's a big one. And then obviously quiet. Um... And it's, you know, I, I actually sleep with a fan on. You do? Yeah. So I like, obviously, temperature is key as well. So it keeps the room cool. But also I've I've almost created like a bit of a comfort with that that white noise from the fan. I was fan. about to say white noise. That's that's a real thing, isn't it? Yeah. That's a real thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but what I also, <laughs> so I'll, <laughs> I drive my other half mental because I have the fan on. Yeah. But I also wear earplugs. Okay. Because it's, I like it. Can you, can you still hear the hum? It, but it's, it's minor. Is it? But what I can't hear is like other external noise. So the actual, the, the humming of the fan with the earplugs, it's almost, it just disturbs like any external noise. So even if like, you know, little man's kicking off in the night, you know, sometimes I've got to get a kick because I won't hear it. Um, if there's a car alarm going off in the street, I won't hear it because the, that, that noise just kind of drowns out a little bit. Um, so yeah, so I create almost like a, an ambient sound in the room, which helps me sleep. 
So yeah, and and also obviously that also keeps you cool as well. So on that as well, with your with your sleep troubles, do you find devices before you go to bed, that type of stuff before you go to sleep? Do you think that really stop hinders you going to sleep, or are you yeah. quite good at you know being on on your PC until late? switching off and then going straight to bed no not at all it, it does hinder me and it's something that i really need to try and manage so if i'm working late if i'm up doing editing or or anything on the laptop or even just sort of um death scrolling on instagram or yeah. whatever it is if i then put that phone down and try and go and sleep i can't you know i just it just disturbs my sleep too much um at the very at the very least you need to be putting on some sort of night mode um and dimming the lights in the house but if you can get off your devices maybe like an hour before yeah. you think about going to bed, that's a really good shout. Um, so that's like sleep hygiene, really. That's the key components. Obviously, you know, again, it's not about being clean, but clean bed sheets and that type of thing is obviously yeah, going to help. Yeah. And I mentioned about the, the hot shower or bath, and that's something that often people will find relaxing. And that's typically because when you have uh, hot water hitting your light skin, mm -hmm. um, it actually reduces your core temperature. Um, yeah, and your core temperature dropping is never another factor in you falling asleep well as well. Sounds really weird, but I, I quite like like a not a cold shower, but like um like yeah, just a mediocre shower when I'm hot and at night in the shower. Like say I'm about to go to bed and I feel quite like hot and sticky because it's, it's warm outside on holiday or something. Could you jump in the shower, cools you right down, and get back in the bed and I feel great, great to go yeah. to sleep then. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so it's just a, just just in the body temperature that will definitely help you sleep. Um, and then there's other things that you can do if you want to go a step deeper as well. But things like um, creating, you know, sort of uh, some sort of sleeping or waking pattern more so. So one of the, the things that I changed that really impacted my sleep in a positive way was I was always guilty if I was having disturbed sleep. Um, I'd you know I'd, I'd kind of just aim for eight hours. So if I went to bed at like two a.m. I'd probably end up getting up at 10. If I went right, to bed okay. at like 11 p.m., I'd get up at like 7. Okay. So I was getting up at different times. Um, and as a result, like I just, yeah, would go to sleep at different times. And I read somewhere that it's really important that you get up at the same time every day, regardless of what you do the night before, because your body will adjust in, and figure it out across the week. But by doing that, by getting up at the same time every morning, you know, there become some days where I was shattered because I didn't get to sleep till late. But eventually my body just... Gets used to it. Yeah, I Gaps, created a rhythm. It? Yeah, yeah. And then I started getting to like 11 o'clock. I was getting up at seven every day. 11 o'clock, I'd be like falling asleep. So it was great. Yeah, I got a disgustingly, you know, horrible thing now where I get up at half past five naturally. Mm. So every morning, just half past, 20 past five, 25 past five, I like check my phone just to see what time it is, see if I've got like an extra hour hoping in my head. And I look and it'll be like 25 past. Oh, fuck yeah. my life, you know? And um, yeah, I've got into that pattern just where I'm up yeah. consistently for the last probably two, three years. And I do, you know, six o'clock PT starts. So, you know, half, five, oh, at 20 past five, actually, my alarm goes off. And that's when I'm just like, yeah, that's, that's when I'm going to get up. And my body is adapted to that. But what I've started doing, and again, I've got to do more research into this because I feel great doing this, but I don't know if it's obviously optimal. Um, I, I tend to go sleep probably about 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock-ish, watch TV in bed, just relax and naturally kind of fall asleep. Um, I'm a good sleeper anyway, but I will get up at half past five, six o'clock regardless, um, definitely Monday to Saturday. What that means though is that I end up being pretty tired in the afternoon. So my, obviously I do like a lot of like split shifts. So I'll probably 12, one o'clock then go for another hour. I'm quite strict with just an hour. But I, I, I was I was interested to see if there was any more research into that to see if that would affect my, you know, my cognitive function or if it improves it at all by having that sleep. Yeah, I think it does. I think the key thing is that it's just knowing you're obviously your sleep cycles. Mm -hmm. So I think, is it 45 minutes, I think, a sleep cycle? That's what they were saying, yeah. yeah. So if you typically sleep longer than that, and you're going into like a second sleep cycle that you then pull yourself out of. That's sometimes when it can actually have an adverse effect. Yeah. But I think if you sleep for less than a full sleep cycle or yeah. to I'll, it, then I, that's fine. I typically give myself an hour, but it usually takes me about 10 to 15 minutes to actually yeah. drop drop off, yeah, if that yeah. makes sense. So that's why I try and like really strict with it, like only an hour, because I've done it before in the past and I've gone on for two, two and a half hours and you do, you wake up and you feel you feel rubbish from it, you know, and then you feel like got a headache, got this, got that, you know. Yeah, and one of the other things that you can do as well is is a regular sort of wake up time, is is just sort of creating a positive association with yeah. your bed. 
and you obviously mentioned about like watching TV in bed. That's typically quite bad because you create an association with your bed, which is watching TV. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And really, there should only be two things that you do in your bed, sleeping and, and the other one that you can use your imagination for. Um, but anything else that you do, whether it's laying in there, reading a book, watching TV, on your phone, yeah, like you're subconsciously creating an association with those things. So then when you go to bed, again, your mind, your subconscious isn't triggered to go right sleep time yeah. because it's expecting some other activity. Um so that's really important as well. And that, that applies to both when you wake up and you go to bed. So if you are the sort of person who likes to read a book before bed and that helps you fall asleep, then sometimes it's actually more prudent to, to maybe sort of, I don't know, have a, a comfy chair in your bedroom. So you can still go in your bedroom, but read the book in the chair. And then when you're like, oh, I'm about to nod off, yeah. then hop in the bed and you're asleep. Yeah, that's likewise, interesting. Likewise, if you wake up and you, you want to lay in because it's a Sunday, that's fine, but just drag your ass out of bed go lay on the sofa and have you lay in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, but what do you think the benefit of that is? So it's just to not have that association with watching TV in bed yeah. and then getting too used to that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I find that, yeah. I think for me, because I can sleep anywhere, it's not a m- massive issue. And I guess there's going to be people that have massive problems with their sleep and they need to really listen to your advice on that. But I would argue that your, your success with sleep is partly to do with your consistent early wake-up time, mate. Yeah, I think so. I think obviously I'm pretty active as well. And I don't know. Yeah, I, I've, I've never really struggled with sleep, but I am really consistent with my sleep pattern. Mm-hmm. That's the one thing I will say. Like, no matter what, I will wake up pretty much the same times and I'll go sleep the same times by probably half an hour every day. Yeah. And that that's made a huge difference. When I was younger, in my 20s, I used to be horrendous with it. I used to be like what you were saying, like I'd go to bed at two and still wake up at seven because I'd work or whatever crap I was doing. Then I'd be tired and then that would go on and on and on and on. And then I was getting in these like horrible sleep patterns. Whereas now I know how important it is. So I make sure that I'm always, you know, doing all things. And, and the big thing for me as well is because obviously being a, being a personal trainer and how I know now how important it is for like muscle recovery, and grow for your muscles and you know your hormone balances and you know improving your performance daily and all those types of things mm, yeah 100 percent. we'll come on to that in a sec before we do and, and i i almost forget to mention this because to me it's so obvious but obviously stimulants before bed <laughs> like caffeine yeah, in particular caffeine, yeah. um, and even alcohol can really hinder your sleep as well yeah. and it's funny because um a lot of people think about like a nightcap and they think about they'll have a drink and it makes them a bit giddy and they fall asleep Right. Which it does, but the actual quality of sleep you get when you're un- intoxicated with alcohol is, is terrible. It's horrible, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So although you might fall asleep, like the actual quality of sleep is so it's diminished. Terrible, yeah. It's like it's it's almost not worth it at all. So uh, so yeah, avoid, uh, avoid alcohol, um, cigarettes as well. If you smoke, um, alcohol before bed and caffeine. Um, do all the other things we just talked about and hopefully that will improve it sounds, sleep. It sounds silly, but it sounds pretty fucking obvious, but how many of us have probably done all those things and yeah. tried sleeping and then thinking, why do, I, why do I feel like shit today? You know, it must be so much. Yeah. And even, uh, even vigorous exercise as well. Um, so going back to the other thing that I said that you should be doing in bed, yeah. you know, if that's right before you sleep, <laughs> then maybe make it a little bit more, uh, <laughs> a little bit more loving. <laughs> yeah. Leave the, uh, the more fun stuff for the morning when you test off strong through the roof, perhaps. But that also applies to if you're doing like intense exercise. We obviously do jujitsu. Uh, I tend to avoid like really late jujitsu classes because if I go and train jujitsu and I'm not like stopping exercise till nine at night, I'm definitely not getting to sleep by 10, 11. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. I remember when I um, come back from injury and I was starting CrossFit. Mm. And we used to do like the seven, eight o'clock classes at night. Yeah. But you'd like murder yourself, you know what I mean? Some of those wads. And I used to remember I, that was probably the only time where I used to lay there just aching, like buzzing still from the workouts and whatever else. And I used to be just lay there like, there's no way I'm going to sleep. No way. I, I could still probably sleep after a jiu-jitsu session at, within a few hours. But those when those CrossFit workouts, when they used to be like big, long runs and, and huge arm wraps and all sorts of stuff. And yeah, his body was broken. <laughs> You'd be like, fucking hell. Yeah. So, so yeah, if you are listening and you're struggling with sleep, then then maybe try some of those things yeah, and it definitely. can definitely help. And then I guess let's move on to uh, why sleep's important, mate. What do you think? Well, just the first thing is muscle recovery and growth. I think uh, with, with, uh, when, you, when you sleep, your body produces growth hormone, which obviously massively helps you recover 
and and grow and in tissue growth is 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 how that happens um you you must you must aim for probably eight hours of sleep a day again like i said I, i'm currently like splitting my eight hours basically and i don't know what the benefits of that but people that sleep eight hours a day have 20 percent better muscle recovery than people who don't so if you're training in the gym and your sleep is shit and you're wondering why you're not recovering great could be right in front of your why mm, yeah that's a good stat mate and then what do you think about i don't know the effects of like sort of mental well-being so like depression anxiety do you think that has an impact on that sort of stuff yeah massively because if you're well just the it's, it's stuff that people would already know but if you're you know if you're tired how much that impacts your your decision making you know how you feel you know are you going to have the most optimal workout if you really can't be asked you know you could you can do everything right but if your sleep's not great it's not really going to hit the right spot and then if it doesn't if if you're having a lazy workout which we've all been been doing it but if that carries on for day after day you imagine over a week or a month or six months how much that's going to have an impact on your actual progression in the gym because that's effectively what we're trying to improve isn't it um with this podcast yeah yeah 100 percent. and then i guess like we talked about obviously sleep but also rest and recovery as well and i think that's worth touching on because obviously you know we think about rest and recovery and obviously sleep does apply to that mm -hmm. but also just when we think about i guess you know kind of how you undulate your training you know how you you know take rest periods and and recovery periods and there's um I'm going to talk about gas which is the general adaptation syndrome and the various stages of that so basically when you create like a new stimulus in the body um you get like an alarm phase or an alarm response and that's typically where you get a bit of like an increase in like cortisol you typically get like muscle soreness um so you get like doms and that type of thing and that can obviously like last for a few days and then once you've basically like experience that your body goes into like a resistance phase where it basically starts adapting to that stimulus but that only happens if you kind of ease off a little bit so you basically give your period of uh, your body a period of recovery where it creates resistance to the stimulus and you get this adaptation which happens in the body and that allows you to get fitter faster stronger and everything else but if you keep pushing um, and you don't have any recovery then basically you just go into fatigue and then what you find is that when you kind of start like that initial phase, so you start your baseline, you have like a little dip when you get this like sort of stress response. Right. And then what happens as you go into this resistance, you kind of curve up and then your kind of performance improves. Mm -hmm. But then if you keep going without rest, just, then just you just get this fatigue and it starts just plummeting. So that's something that's like really like important. So it's basically like you just hit exhaustion, basically is essentially the third stage or the third phase if you don't take rest. So by rest, do you mean more sleep or do you mean less exercise? It's a bit of both really. Like you yeah. said, it's obviously that sleep is really important yeah, because of the key. hormone release and, and everything that happens well, yeah, while you're sleeping. Well, yeah, hormone is a massive one. You know, how important it is to the body and that's why you see people fucking injecting it, you know, because yeah. it is... You know, it is the biggest thing that repairs tissue in your body. Yeah. But but as well as sleep, also just how you kind of ease off your training. So And that's what people find hard, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I mean like like sort of building sort of neurological strength is a really good example as well, where, you know, you might go hard for three weeks and you push up, push up, push up, but then you need to just like have like a deload week where you just yeah. ease off. Yeah. Because yeah, if you um, if you keep going, you hit that sort of exhaustion phase, and yeah, your your performance, your ability to to improve, your the adaptation in your body just suddenly halts, um, and you you could potentially get sick, you get unwell, and you can get injury. Injuries as well, man. Injuries is a good one. Again, another study that's that, that I was looking at. If you sleep less than six hours a night, so if you're really pushing it, and then you 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 sleep less than six hours a night athletes are 1.7 times more likely to get injured than someone who sleeps eight hours, which is a crazy s statistic really, isn't it? You think about that. So you think you're pushing it. And again, that was done on, a, on an athlete, but it, it applies the same to with a regular person, probably even more so to be perfectly honest with you, because you know, where uh, the hobbyist is, is way, way more deconditioned than, than an athlete is. So 
I think that's that's a, that's a huge st- statistic. You imagine how many people push it, push it, push it, push through, and then just get in, injured all the time, you know. And then that derails them even more. So then everything, once people are injured, they just lose their head completely, don't they? Yeah. So obviously, it's it's you know it's really important right through. Um, you know, and I guess some of the examples we used there were kind of like sort of higher end of the the kind of like ability continuum, but even at a lower end of the continuum where you're thinking about just sort of, you know, your average person, your average dad. Like, again, if you're tired, then are you even going to do exercise in the first place? Well, yeah. How many bad choices do you make with food alone when you're tired? How many people, I've always been a nightmare for it, is is late night snacking, you know, being fine all day, getting a bit tired. When I'm tired, I make those bad decisions, you know, with your food. And, you know, how many of us do it? loads absolutely loads mm, yeah so definitely in regard to prepping getting organized you're less likely to do that as well as yeah. bad decision making as well and then i think maybe just sort of moving more into like the the injury stuff and and obviously the field that i work in a little bit more around sort of you know pain conditions yeah i'm interested to hear about that yeah. i mean ultimately you know when you've got an injury or you're in pain you know, some conditions you can't fix and you can, but you basically find yourself in a position where you need to manage, you know, a pain condition or, or an injury that you've got. And there's obviously the recovery and the sort of the, the, the physical, the physiology recovery that we just talked about, but just the kind of mental capacity to be able to manage a pain condition. Obviously, if you've not had a good rest or good sleep, it's just massively diminished. And then what you tend to find is it's one of these vicious cycles where if you are suffering with pain and that will often disturb your sleep and then that's going to make you tired and that's going to make you less able to manage and and cope with your pain, which will mean your perception of your pain is therefore increased and that will then impact your sleep more and you get caught in a bit of a vicious cycle. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So you end up, yeah, just in this like feedback loop of, of negativity and pain. Do you hear that a lot with um, people with chronic back pain? Mm. Because obviously when they sleep, they move, whatever. And, and with your back in bed, it's just generally uncomfortable, isn't it? If it's, if it's, if it's bad, you know, and you, you hear it all the time, don't you? They, they can't sleep because they're bad, so bad, and, bad, and then they're just chronic, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, and then we kind of mentioned about rest and recovery at the start as well. And I guess it's good to define those things because for me, rest is complete rest. So it's complete cessation of any any sort of activity beyond activities of everyday living. Mm-hmm. So that's, you know, we're not doing any weights today. We're not going for a run today. We're not doing anything like strenuous or purposeful in regard to exercise today. That's complete rest. And sometimes people need that. You know, again, like we just talked about, if someone's had a really hard workout and they've, you know, created a new stimulus, whether it's a complete new stimulus or just an intensity or a new intensity of stimulus, and the body's in that kind of that, that coping and, and defense phase, that resistance phase. Like some rest there is quite good. What do you think about these people that are like no rest? You know, like the the David Goggins, the the put the pushing, pushing, pushing. Do you think it's it, it can't be good for you? The thing is, mate, I mean, you know, we've got seven and a half billion people on the planet. Yeah. You know, I mean we're we're talking in like um, you know, sort of typical yeah. scenarios, and you're always gonna get outliers. So Some people are built different. Maybe David Goggins is one of them. Some people maybe have an ability to keep going without rest. But I think typically speaking, um, for the masses, I think it's a really bad idea. I think at times the message can be a little bit dangerous because like you said, you get outliers who are able to function like that. It's like anything in life. But then the masses think I can do that as well. And then they find out really quickly that they can't and then it puts them off. So that's my only ever issue with stuff like that. What what people like him do is absolutely amazing. You know, I love I love he's inspirational, motivational. I love watching him. But when he's talking about how little he sleeps and how much he trains and all those types of things, I think your average dad who's listening to him and thinking, yeah, I can do that. What happens really quickly? They're fatigued, they're tired, and they get injured. Yeah, and then it really derails them from from actually achieving their 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 goals of feeling better. <laughs> you know because that's ultimately what we want to be isn't it Mm. yeah i mean it's just a really extreme version or an example of of what you can do like that's it's way beyond the ability both physically mentally for most people yeah and also 
entirely unnecessary for most people in my opinion as well i think that's a great point because that is it isn't it a lot of that is just unnecessary yeah you don't to get really good results you don't need to do all that mm. <laughs> and i think that's what people people do uh, overlook at times yeah so so there's you know this there's, this there's, there's, there's an evidence base around why rest is important yeah but but that boring shit aside like just from a well-being perspective and how it makes you feel like people feel better when they rest um and just going back to what i was chatting about a second ago with like, the rest and recovery that like, rest is stopping but you the like, recovery is different so re for me recovery is like an active recovery right so you know if you've had a hard session you know, you can still undulate your training or do something different. So you don't need to completely stop to sometimes recover. So if you've had a hard workout, you know, and you've done your legs and you've had a heavy leg session, for example, you can still get out for a walk. You know, you can still have active recovery. You can go for a light swim. And what you shouldn't be doing is jump back in and doing another heavy leg session. Um, equally, if you want to stay active and you've had a heavy leg session, go and train upper body. You know what I mean? So there's, there's ways to, to kind of still pace yourself while working around you know a sort of pain or a flare-up or just doms or whatever you might be suffering yeah with. i quite like a nice walk the next day after a leg workout mm. feels it just loosens me up makes me feel a bit better and then straight back into it on as normal on monday so i always like have a kind of like a active rest recovery day yeah yeah i think that's it i think you know there's a number of different ways you can do it whether it's you know sort of like uh, you know sort of a split so you know you're training on you know sort of whether it's a four-day split where you're doing sort of I don't know, you're probably more of a, a bro than me, but like, what's a good four day split these days? Well, I'll do a five day, mate, me personally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, in fairness, I don't, I don't really do a split. I just do a, a chest, shoulders, arms, back, yeah, legs. That's a split. <laughs> no, but I don't do like a chest try back by like a bro, yeah, yeah. bro split, you know? Yeah. Um, obviously, another one is like um, sort of legs push pull. Yeah. So, you know, sort of three. Um, personally i tend to do i pretty much do full body workouts these days like yeah. maybe twice a week that's enough for me yeah like this once you once you uh nail your nutrition your sleep everything else i think you can get people you can get away with i've got i've had clients that train literally twice a week and they look incredible so i think i think that's um yeah you can you can optimize your training you don't have to kill yourself and and i think a big a big thing of when you was talking about your rest and recovery and one of the big things is like actually listen to your body sometimes yeah. you have that little thing in your head where you know i've ignored it quite a few times in the past and it's always ended leaded to injury mm -hmm. always like where i've been like oh, i shouldn't train today i've gone crossfit and then i've injured my shoulder and i'm like yeah because you've you've gone too hard yeah um especially blokes were terrible at it like we just don't listen we just think nah it's all right it's fine whereas women they do listen to their, their gut a little bit more and they go yeah you know i'm not feeling great today can we take this easy whereas i think our egos get in the way a lot of the time yeah yeah <laughs> maybe like, yeah, yeah we're fine yeah yeah i've definitely met some crazy women though that are just as bad probably worse but yeah those those uh those 40 year old mums that are just like kids grown up and they're they're fucking savages yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah i think it's um yeah i, I think it's, it's a really good point i think listening to your body is, is really important and i i'm all for like keeping momentum and, and creating habits but you know you're not going to undo all your good work by taking a day or two off mm -hmm. and obviously age is a factor as well mate i mean it's different if you're you're 20 years old but you know if you're sort of you know 30s 40s 100% then it just takes a bit more time to recover and you need yeah. to respect your age sometimes and, and just do what your body needs yeah yeah I can agree more mate I think I think even for me being 34 10 years ago you know I used to be able to play football and not warm up <laughs> barely you know pretty much injury free by the time I was 29 I was, you know fucking hell and then now I have to do loads of fucking warm up cool down stretching in between all sorts of stuff because your body just doesn't react the same. No, way. no. One thing I do want to finish on as well, though, is I guess like think about, I guess, your mindset versus your body, though, because there's, I think, a difference between like your body feeling fatigued and battered mm. and mentally just not being bothered with something. And, you know, I've said this before with exercise, but it's like, it's almost like a net positive physical activity. And again, it's about intensity as well. But often I find myself in a position because we're busy and we're parents and we work mm -hmm. 
where I need to go to jujitsu or whatever. And I just, I can't, I'm sat there and I can't be bothered. Like I've done nothing. I've done no movement <laughs> like all day, yeah. but I'm just tired mentally and I can't be bothered yeah. to go and do the exercise or the physical activity that I, I'm meant to be doing. And, you know, sometimes I, you know, I let myself down and I don't, but often I, I pull myself up off the sofa and I go. You definitely got better at that. Yeah. Uh, just quitting drinking obviously helped a lot with that as well. Um, but when I go, once I get going, like I always feel good for it. And typically I always say, this was like the net positive thing that I just said, but I tend to find that the energy that you put into doing activity, you often get back like twofold. So even if you've got no energy to exercise, but then you exercise after you've exercised, often you feel more energetic. Um, and I, I went to a, um, a conference yesterday the Elevate event and there was a lady there talking, a doctor who was talking about resilience. Mm -hmm. She was like a resilience specialist. And she she was saying that resilience is energy. Right, okay. So by having energy, like you can be resilient. Like if you've got no energy about you, like you just can't be resilient to things. You haven't got the energy, the power to resist. Mm -hmm. um, but she said, yeah, like resilience is energy by definition. And you get energy through sleep, through physical activity and good nutrition so you do those three things well and you'll get energy and if you've got energy you can be resilient and you can get your shit done yeah i think that was a great way to finish it mate it's really good and then that mate <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm fairness i've missed my afternoon today i'm pissed right off yeah all right. that was good mate awesome all right thank you bye